Hi, in the last tutorial we are going to study the causal forest and I hope you already passed through the exercises by yourself and you are here just to know uh, what exactly each code means. Just to summarize, you have a hypothetical RCT where you have this X offenders from Compass dataset which we assign to some job help and after some time we see their monthly income wage and we are interested how our job help treatment affected their wages. So first of all, I say, as any times, you start by acquainting yourself with the data set. So one thing that you can do, you can take the data set and first of all, say, well, first thing that you might want to do is to see what class it is. This is an object, it lives somewhere in the environment of R and you want to know what exactly it is what exactly it represents. We want to know its class. You want to know, for example, its structure. Aha. Structure. And yes, you want to know its head. You can say data set. Head. And what else can you possibly imagine you want to know? Oh, for example, what kind of names it has. Like, okay, that's enough. Let's. I'm sorry. I, sh I should comment this out because this code is broken. Okay, so first thing we said what class data set is? It's a data frame. Data set, what is its structure? And it tells you it's a data frame with 1000 observations of eight variables and it tells you a bit of about each variable. We have three numeric variables in here and the rest are factor variables with just two levels. No, yes, male, female, African-American or white, uh, Caucasian. Now, this is how it looks, how the head of it looks, six rows, when we ask the head of this uh, data frame. And you see? how this data would look like if you exported it in Excel or CSV. And these are the names. So here we asked names. And here are the names of all these variables contained in this data frame. Yep. So these are our six variables with background characteristics of the X offenders. One, job help, which is the assi assignment to treatment and wage the outcome that we're interested in. Now, we are asked, so these are all the things that you can do. Next thing, you are asked to show the density plot of the variable wage. So usually, uh, I, when I start typing, I write dataset and then ggplot. You pi I pipe dataset to ggplot. I could do it another way, as usual. It can be whatever the code, and then I say data equal dataset. So I show that the data that it should use is this object called data set. But that's what piping is nice for. You don't necessarily need to do this. You can actually write data set and then say pipe to ggplot. Because before you pipe it into ggplot, you can also ask to filter certain rows or take only certain columns of this data set or mutate some of the variables in the data set before you want to plot it. That's why piping is super extremely nice. Now, if it was a uh, proper R script, if I do this, it would understand that it's after pipe operation, so it will have a sort of uh, tabulation automatically in RStudio. Here we are in the tutorial environment. Unfortunately, we, it doesn't do it automatically here. Uh, so ggplot, what does ggplot want? We want a density plot, so we say aesthetics. Ggplot always has aesthetics where we say x should be what should be the variable that is plotted at the x on the x axis. It should be wage. Now, if it was scatter plot, we would say y equals to I don't know some other like number of priors. But we are not doing scatter plot. We are doing density plot. And how do we ask it to do the density plot? So, what if I stopped here, right? So. Data set is a data frame, but what if I just stop here, I say pipe data set into ggplot, what kind of object will be at the end? And to know this, we can always look at its structure. 
Mm -hmm. Sorry, class. I want to see its class. Its class is ggplot. So, remember, if we did class in here, we would ask get the class of the object that is piped through the pipe, and it would be data frame. But since we apply this class piping after we already transformed our data set into ggplot, the class of this object transformed into ggplot. Okay, so it's a ggplot and we can assign it. For example, plot. Plot wage, right? Now, if you do plot wage, does it show you anything? Yeah, it shows you something, but it doesn't actually show you the density plot. Why? Because we haven't yet asked it to do this. And then we add a layer called... So this creates a base layer for our ggplot, but we want to add the layer of geom density. Yeah. And here is our density plot for wages. Now, of course, we can just do this. We don't need to assign anything if we don't want to store this. And we just do this part like this. It's the same. Now, finally, the last part, and I want to remove this. Get the number of people who were treated. Data set, as, and I want to show you the names again. Data set consists of these variables, and we want to know how many got job help. And job help, if you remember, let's see, just select just this column, job help. Remember, it's a numeric variable. So what we can do, we can simply say, and this numerical variable lives in our data frame, frame called data set. So what we can do, we say summarize. Summarize accesses this data frame and you can apply any kind of functions, easy functions or even custom-made functions using the names of the columns. So, for example, here we want to know sum of job help. Why? Well, if this person is treated, this one is not treated and so on, the number of treated is just the sum of this column. Voila! We have 481 person who were given help who were treated with the treatment.